What is going on, Adventure Nation? In this video, we are going to close out our Season 8 and end 2022. We're going to show you a little bit of the property and what's going on there. A little bit of what we've been doing in Los Barillas. And then a brief look at Los Barillas closing out the new year, closing out 2022. This is Life with Paul and Lorena. All right, today is moving day, so we're just getting ready to, to roll out of the RV park and head over to the property. Today's an exciting day. Okay, there is Paul pulling to the property for the first time. By the way, there's where Tom and Faye are gonna go on this side. I'm gonna take this side. So we just got here literally a minute ago, two minutes ago. And our first struggle already. The sun got too deep. <laughs> so now Paul has to dig this out, dig us out basically. <laughs> we'll see. He is didn't let it sink more though. He is stopped there before fixing it. What are you doing, Paul? Making sure I don't get stuck. More stuck. What? More stuck. Well, it's I stopped before we got in the water truck. Yes. That was smart. Now, there's no tree on the other side, right? Uh, there elephant trees are closest. The rest are further back. <laughs> Stuck again. <laughs> yeah, he's creating his track. <laughs> All right, we got the RV in position. Lori and I were just kicking back and relaxing. It wasn't perfect by any means. We wanted to park back in there next to our neighbor's uh, storage area. So we wanted to put the RV in this way with our patio over here. But as soon as we drove in there, it just was fine on the way in actually. And then just as I tried to back up to try and square up a little bit, it just sunk. And then we just decided to pull in just off of the front road and be fine with being right here. So. Not perfect game plan, but it worked out all right. We just realized that this is literally six years to the day that we set out in Freya from Las Vegas. How crazy is that? It is pretty crazy. It is insane. So we are now on our own property again, this time in Mexico, but six years to the day. We left December 16th. We can't decide whether it was December 16th or 17th, but because today's December 16th, we're gonna go with December 16th because it just sounds cooler that six years to the day, we are now on our own property again here in Mexico. And it's all been cleared. I don't know if you guys remember, I think we took a, a picture and maybe I'll pop it up here. And that's that's it right there. That patch of dirt is ours. Yeah, yeah it goes from uh, that uh, post there down to uh, this post here over where the little Y is. I guess it's over on that side of what it looked like before we cleared it. But now the property is clear with the exception of some of the trees that are protected that you're not allowed to cut down. We're all set. We're gonna be start marking off the property as far as uh, where we're gonna put buildings and garages and the landing strip and the lazy river and the waterfalls and all that kind of stuff. And then once we get all that stuff marked off, then we'll start uh, to develop. We are not gonna develop for probably close to a year or so because we're just gonna hang out, see where the sun falls, see where the wind blows, all that kind of stuff before we build because we wanna build as sustainably as possible so that we can limit air conditioning, we can limit heating and all of that kind of stuff because we just 
that's what we like to do. Freya's all settled in right now. Now it's time to just kick back, relax, and slowly start to drop in some infrastructure, some electric, water, and things like that. So exciting. Good morning, everybody. I don't think I'm gonna record every day. As a matter of fact, I know I'm not gonna record every day, but I'm gonna record every now and then as an update, not only for us, for a few people that are out there that are curious about what's going on with our property. This is day one. And as you can see, we've exploded everything out of the RV and out of the car. It's an absolute mess. I still have the mess out here that I created when I thought I was gonna park over here in the corner. So I'll slowly get that cleaned up. I started raking a little bit here. Uh, you guys know me and my raking. <laughs> so that'll uh, that'll happen. But this is, this is day one. This will be the start of the project. Not all these trees are gonna stay, by the way. Some of these will get cleared out eventually. Uh, I'm gonna wind up stepping on all kinds of stickers and things. But they'll all get cleared out eventually. Not all of them, but bits and pieces of them. We want to try and keep as many as possible, but we wanted the property cleaned out enough that we could get out and maneuver around on it. But we didn't want to take everything out because obviously, uh, while some of them are protected, you can't take them out. And the other ones, you just uh, want to make sure that we have them uh, so that we can transplant them, move them around, and make the property look nice. I mean, you don't want to have no vegetation whatsoever. We've got two piles in the back of brush and wood that we'll be using for mini campfires over the next several months, I'm sure. Beautiful cactus there, awesome. Yeah, that's it, that's uh, that's day one. It's just starting the cleanup of the property, getting ready to have Tom and Faye. Tom and Faye, our friends, are gonna bring their rig in here for the rest of the uh, winter. So they're gonna hang out with us here as well and, and probably help us clean up and stuff a little bit, but we'll give you guys little bits and pieces as time goes on to see how things develop. One of the first things we have to do is bring in electricity. Electricity's already to the property over here in the corner, but water is something that we're gonna have to bring in for the foreseeable future because there's no city water on this property. So we'll wind up putting a big cistern in and then uh, septic. Uh, we're gonna put that in as well, probably along the back fence there. We're gonna do what's called a biodigester and then <clears throat> have a few other uh, separating tanks after that to get it as clean as possible so that we can use that gray water for watering the plants on the property. So that's all I got for today. The next morning. All right, star date, day three. <laughs> Again, I'm not gonna do this every day, but a little bit windy today. But today I gotta start on getting some of our temporary infrastructure up starting with this bad boy here and this is going to be our water cistern down here these are called rotoplasts i don't know in the states if they have rotoplasts but down here that's the most popular one tanaco is is another brand i think it's actually a tanaco the brand is rotoplast kind of like the whole kleenex and uh uh tissue that kind of thing this is what we're going to have water in for the rv this is 2500 liters and that'll allow us to fill this up only once every few months rather than filling up our uh, 360 liter tank that is in the RV. Now I'm gonna start talking in metric because the metric system is just better. And if you don't know the metric system, you should learn it because it's all based on tens. Super, super easy. You know, wrenches are three millimeter, four millimeter, five millimeter, six millimeter, like that, instead of three eighths, 7 16 half, 9 16 5 8 all that craziness. Learn the metric system, folks. It's so much easier. <laughs> right, rant over. The Rotoplast water cistern is gonna be my first project going into the first few days here. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna bring it up and we're going to put it up closer to the street because most of these guys have a fairly small length hose. So we're gonna put it up in here, kind of tucked in to the back here so that they can reach it. I might even put it up here. I'm gonna have to check with La Hefa to, to see if that's okay, because that's a little bit more exposed. Not that it's a big deal right now, but that'll allow us to fill the RV up. We've got a pump as well. Pump the water into the RV and just a lot less of having to worry about uh, water. Tom and Faye are in Canada. We're babysitting the dog. That's Reacher. All right, let's get to it. 
if you want to learn a particular language, in this case, it's Spanish. My Spanish right now, I can understand quite a bit. Don't talk it as much, but if you want to learn, immersion is your best way to learn. Literally everything here is going to be in Spanish. There's no reading in Spanish and, and, and or English. It's Spanish. So I'm going to learn my Spanish fairly quickly, setting up rotoplasses and gas stuff and electrical very, very fast. Richard is supervising. All right, do we want to have this out here further or would you rather me tuck it back in there behind the trees? Well, of course tuck it All right. so it's more hidden. All right, I'll uh, remove a couple branches and then we'll move it in there. Okay. And meet little Mac too. Like, oh, look at Mac. little Mac. I guess our neighbors are having their property cleared as well. And this is why you have to have barbed wire around your property. And, and you want to have five lines of it, not just three. Because on the three lines, on the one side, they just walk through it. That's right, Reacher, you tell them. You tell them, Reacher. Tom and Faye's dog is letting them know who's boss. 72 hours later. Definitely gonna need an outfit, Paul. What kind of outfit? Like yeah, a Selkirk. It's gonna have to. Everything's got to be the shoes, the shorts, the shirt, the hat. All same brand. Did you say skorts? Does it, does it, oh, it could be a skort. Yeah, yeah. Maybe crotchless. <laughs> or a thong and a short. Six and a half hours later. I know that one was a little short and sweet, but that's all we've got for season eight. And we hope you'll stick around for season nine. Hit that subscribe button. It'd be equally as cool if you liked the video. And we'll see you again in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.